track, pick a time, any day is fine, pack a bag, say you do, let's sail off me and you on another adventure. In this episode, I've worked very hard to record and document all of the procedures in my recent outboard rebuild. We will technically be rebuilding a 2005 25 horsepower two-stroke Yamaha, but I try to keep it generalized so you can apply some of these tips and tricks to other outboards. This rebuild is also orchestrated around the necessity to improvise, as we do not have a pristine mechanics facility with all tools available and also do not have the availability to order in any parts. We are on an island in the middle of the Caribbean on a sailboat. To those of you who do work in such facilities, please feel free to leave educational informational comments. Just bear in mind that I and many others may not always have those facilities available. The damage we see here is due to not properly mixing oil into the fuel, as this outboard was stolen in last year's episode, Dude, Where's My Dinghy, and then finally recovered six weeks later in Operation Ridiculous. I was not able to locate a machine shop here in the islands that could press the center bearing off of this crankshaft and properly put it back together balanced. So here's where it gets interesting. Out of island necessity for a temporary solution, I will be pickling the rusty, not so trusty crankshaft from the outboard that was involved in the powerboat accident. After being ran over, sank, and sitting on the deck to oxidize for five months, this crankshaft actually pickled out very well and held me over for two months until I could locate this much nicer crankshaft. A little more work for me, of course, but a lot more awesome footage for you. Dun dun! We're back! And very important, especially if you're new, even if you're not, old notepad. We're gonna write boat parts or bolt parts, put them in bags, section them, keep ourselves real organized. But let's get started. First, the lower unit off. Lower unit, bam, you got this guy. Um, it's gonna be held with four bolts, sometimes two, front and back, depends on the engine. But you'll see a line of separation. This has to come off. There's also for your shifting linkage, this here is what is controlled by your throttle mechanism. And that's what put your, puts your engine in and out of gear. So make sure we undo that. You'll need 10 millimeter bolts here and I believe these are 12s. Don't forget your shift linkage. You'll have a short set bolt and a long rod bolt. You'll need to back all the way off. Once all linkage and bolts are removed, the lower unit should pop right off. If it's been a long time, you may have to use a rubber mallet to help persuade it. Up in each other. It looks really complex, but it's actually quite simple. So the first thing you do when you get in here is look at everything very closely and look at what makes sense to take apart first. You see I've already undone the three bolts that do this pool cord housing because it's on the very top. And you also have your neutral safety switch that comes down from that and goes here. Sometimes they may go somewhere else, but follow this guy down here. Loosen your bolts, be able to pull it up and out of there. And then you can simply slide that little rod sideways. The piano. Bam. You can leave this all together in one piece. Don't take this apart. If any of you have ever undone your windings in here, you understand how challenging this can be, but still possible. Now we'll go ahead and snatch this carburetor off. As you can see, there's several bolts, but if you look closely whenever you go to undo them, you can look at the rods that actually hold the carburetor to the power head. The plate on the front is attached with the smaller bolts and not necessary. You can leave them attached and leave the carburetors together. Once we get all of these out, that last one can't come out until it's lifted. We have a few other things we're going to have to undo. There's a fuel line going in somewhere. You're going to have to find that on this engine. It's on the side right here, so we'll get that fuel line undone. Over here, you're going to have a choke attachment, which if you look right in here, that's easy to pop off with a little flat head. There we go. There you go, you just pressure it out while helping those pins open up and release right there and leave that on the carb. Your throttle on this one is just off of a little push arm, so you don't have to undo a throttle. There would typically be a throttle cable. 
usually set into a screw or something, so you would have to remove that on different outboards. If you do have to detach the throttle cable with a set pin or screw, take careful mm -hmm. note of its position. We can lift a little bit and get that fuel line undone. Ta-da! Take these. Now, if we look at this, we could remove the flywheel. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this bolt because it's gonna be quite challenging to remove. I'm just gonna start that. The correct tool for this job would be an impact driver. There's a small divot in the bottom of most flywheels to help with leverage. Just make sure whenever you're applying pressure, you are on a solid portion of the outboard and nothing that's going to break. Once the bolt is loose, leave it on the splines. Just back it out to the tip of the thread so they're not damaged by the flywheel remover. So what's happening is the flywheel puller presses this. These will have screws that come through them. And I'll bed them into that so they're attached. And this middle piece will push down and pull the whole flywheel off. It's pretty important to get all of these close to the same distance so that whenever you put pressure on them on this flywheel it pulls out evenly. This also needs to be seated very well on the nut in the middle, which I can go ahead and start doing. As you can see, this portion of the footage is from the sunken rusty outboard, so this flywheel is very adhered to the crankshaft. Vibrations and hammers can be extremely useful in helping break things like this free. Just be cautious that if you're not contacting hard metal, to use a rubber mallet so you don't damage anything. Next we have ignition tings. The timer base is connected to the module with several plugs. You can unplug those, but if they're not color coordinated, please take a picture for future reference. The module and coils will come off with this port bracket, and I've already removed the spark plugs. Now, you get the brake bolts loose. Once they're broke loose, you can just use your socket to turn, make much larger rotations, faster. Take a picture of this, this brown to white here, and then you'll know how to put it back together with your phone. You can take a picture, you can make a note over here on the side. Module, brown, white to brown. We'll call that, it's the port side of the engine, port bracket bolts. Port bracket bolts. Then we're back on this step, putting these bolts in. We'll know to attach that wire in that place. Now that this is off, we can just simply set it to the side because as you can see, it's attached here. Uh, we can pull the sleeve back and we can undo all of these wires, which this is actually very straightforward if we wanted to. White and black, white and black, blue to blue, brown to brown, white to red, white to red, black to black. Straightforward. If you wanted to unplug this, you could unplug this and set this aside. I'm just going to do that. There we go. Thank goodness the cockpit floor is up and being refinished right now. Don't even have to worry about it. Again, take this all in and figure out how to take it apart. Um, don't just go unscrewing unnecessary things. These need to just stay there. They're part of this mechanism. So this can just stay there. It's part of this mechanism. Same thing with that inside. Leave it all because it's very space sensitive. So let's just let that stay. See these right here on this underside mechanism. Those should come off. Bam. I always break loose everything before taking it fully out. Once they're all broke loose, you can proceed to take the screw completely out. That is more important in the reverse. When you're putting these in, make sure they're all started before tightening. With stuff like this, instead of making a bag for that, I'm going to show you what I do. Because this is going to come off. Always be careful when you lift things. If you're not 100% sure that everything is going to come with it, then watch and make sure nothing falls. Um, on the bottom of this is also this arm here. This is off. I had to undo here. Um, here we go. 
take a picture of things like that. If you notice something's a little off, there's there's difference for different sizes, grab your cell phone, take a picture of it, make yourself a little note, or take a video like this. So once we lift this off of here and over and away, I'm gonna set it down. And what I like to do with this particular dude is just put it right back together. It just seems safest for this little thing with the skinny metal plate to not take any chances to get bent. Okay, now you can see this is getting pretty basic and pretty empty in here. Um, we're gonna leave the reed on the forward part of the engine because it's another fragile part. So we'll just let it stay attached. There's no reason it's gonna have to get detached. This is our crankshaft. This is what we're going after. As you can see, it's in this casing here, which means this is gonna have to come apart. This whole thing still has to come out. But first, this whole mechanism over here so we're gonna leave all these cables attached to the actual outboard housing up here. We just gotta get them off of this block unit so we can get the block unit out. There we go, and that's the main pivot point for it all there. And this doesn't have to come all the way out, it's just gotta back out of here. In fact, I recommend caution to only back the bolt out as far as necessary, no, helping to keep everything together. Throttle cables. Bam. And as we go to pull up, we can see there's one more attachment here. Um, if you look here, it's like a little flathead deal. And if you put a flathead under that and lift up, it will take the bite off of the little ball that it's on below. And you can slide it off easily. This could all fall apart while it's being shuffled around. So what I like to do here is come behind and take this bracket and again with this going right into here I'm just gonna put this bolt back in here you can take this and just slide that thread back into its home and this bracket will hold this whole mechanism together so that this bolt doesn't come out releasing all of these levers and this will do you a huge favor and just simplifying it all going back together and then all of this, as you can see on our line here, is on one side, so we're just going to leave it. It should not be a problem. We will, however, have to undo it right here. And you can see it's coming from the housing onto the block. All right, now very carefully get your washer, get your pen, and remove that. You may have to undo this bolt just a little bit, preferably not with pliers, but um i knew it was loose so i did i cheated so back that out just enough for that to get removed and then i'm gonna set it right back in now if you're worried about any of this stuff getting broken um you can take it off i like to leave it attached because there's really nothing to put on the back side here and keep it closed together and it's less to figure out later because this gets a little puzzly when you're going back on this outboard, there are six powerhead bolts, and they're accessed from outside the casing on the bottom. Bam! The money bolts! Once all the bolts are removed, secure the casing and give it a good yank. Again, do not hesitate to use a rubber mallet for persuasion. To separate this metal, get this and this out. First of all, we've already removed the top pieces here. If we look at the bottom, we have two bolts, one going to different sides of this. The housing for the lower drive shaft seal usually pries off quite easily. Just be cautious of what surfaces you're prying against. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to crack the casing open and see that crankshaft. On this outboard, we have two large nuts on studs alongside four large bolts and then four smaller bolts. Yes, I know I'm setting a bad example with this metal hammer. Always use rubber mallets. I cheated a bit because I know this casing was apart recently and would come apart easily. Should be able to... Oh, there's the problem! This was the rusty, not so trusty crankshaft that was pickled out of the sunken outboard made a great temporary result, yep. but as you can see, time has taken its the toll and the rod bearings have melted and oozed completely from their housing. 
just now getting into the good stuff and it turns out my computer is well past its 15 minute editing capacity so join me next time for part two where we get in all the internals and find out how we go from what you just saw to this i even gave her a little makeover to match her sassy new attitude so click subscribe, share this with a friend who could use some mechanical motivation, and join me next time on another adventure. Bye. And don't forget, for the first time ever, another adventure finally has shirts promoting some dinghy awareness, fun in the spinnaker, of course some motivational thoughts, and I will be sure to leave a link to that store in the description of this video.